we are going to be talking about the SAG after a strike. This is no fun. I have a document here which is linking directly to the SAG after strike uh, strike site. I'm gonna just read through this and we're gonna talk about it. Um, if you don't know what the SAG after strike is, you're gonna find out because I'm gonna read their site. Here's the simple truth. We're up against a system with where those in charge of multi-billion dollar conglomerates are rewarded for exploiting workers. Very true. The company is represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, AMPTP, which include Amazon slash MGM, Apple, Disney, you get the idea, are committed to prioritizing shareholders and Wall Street. Detailed below are some of the key issues of negotiation where things stand. We moved on some things, but from day one, they wouldn't meaningly, meaningfully engage in most critical issues. So, actors and people involved in the film industry are pissed off because they don't care. They, like, they're not cared about. Big, multi-billion dollar companies could not care less about their workers. And it's disgusting. It's going to ruin the movie industry if it doesn't change. So, this is what they're asking. There's a couple things here. So, we need an 11% general wage increase in year one so our members can recover from the record inflation during the previous contract term. So, inflation's bad, people need to get paid more. Honestly, see, I'm kind of on the fence about this point. Money and actors... I don't know how much actors get paid. I know what a lot of their net worths are, though. I don't think they're going broke. I don't think they're going hungry anytime in their mansions. Actors are very well paid. Maybe not as well paid as they should be, but I digress. I'm not super in on this point entirely. But the AMPTP said the most we will give you is 5%. So, suck it up. We'll give you some, we won't give you any more than that. So, performers need the protection of our images and performances to prevent replacement of human performances by artificial intelligence technology. So, we need rules set in place so that actors don't get replaced by robots. That's a scary thought, and it's something that's going to probably happen at some point. It's already kind of happening. Like, you look at, uh, what's his name? Mark Hamill got de-aged for the Star Wars thing. I don't really watch Star Wars, but it's, like, a real thing. It's a thing where Mark Hamill got de-aged. And, like, you can just kind of do that. You can de-age people. You can make fake people. You can do Paul Walker. He's going to be in the next Fast and Furious movie, from what I'm told. Uh, <laughs> um, if it can happen to people that are dead or are older now... It could easily happen to people that are still alive. Like, you can literally just, hey, you don't need to show up today. We're just going to do this scene without you and then do it digitally. Fun. Here's a comprehensive set of provisions to be grant in to grant informed consent and fair competition when a digital replica is made or our performance is changed using AI. So based on what that says... I'm assuming they're, they want actors to be aware of when their things are going to be done by AI. I don't know if I, I might have read that wrong. Uh, we want to be able to scan a background performer's image, pay them for a half, half a day's labor, and then use an individual's likeness for any purpose forever without their consent. This is what the AMPTP is saying. I don't know if they said this or if this is just paraphrasing, but fuck, if that's the point they're getting to, that is spooky. We also want to be able to make changes to principal performers' dialogue and even create new scenes without informed consent. And we want to be able to use someone's images, likeness, and performances to train new generative AI systems without consent or compensation. That's not good. If you're going to do things involving actors, you tell them about it, you inform them about it, you make sure they're okay with it, and you pay them for it because you're doing shit with them. They are human fucking beings. They are not characters in a video game that you can do whatever you want with. They're human beings. That's fucked up. It's fucked up that they're even trying to do that, especially with background performers. That's like a big thing that I've been on like the bus for, on the bus for the I don't know what I'm talking about. 
I agree with the background performers thing. Like, it's not cool that they're trying to replace background performers. Because a lot of people get their start in the industry as a background performer. Like, that's going to cut away a lot of potential openings. Like, they can't compensate for that. Like, act, acting's just going to die off if they can't get into the business like that. Like, there's no way that everybody can start off as, like, in some big movie and get noticed right away. Like, it's going to be harder for them. And it's just not cool. Like, hire people to do your fucking movies. Don't just put animation that looks like shit. Modern day CG is not very good. We've kind of downgraded over the years because we're trying too hard and we do too much of it. Marvel is the biggest one of this. I hate most Marvel movies nowadays simply because of how much CGI they use. It is fucking unreal. It is unbelievable. It is not fucking cool. I cannot stand it. Anyway. Performers need qualified hair and makeup professionals as well as equipment to safely and effectively style a variety of hair texture styles and skin tones. I'm going to kind of skip over this one. It doesn't really affect me. It doesn't bother me. I don't see any issues with it. Uh, performers need compensation to reflect the value we bring to the streamers who profit from our labor. Consider this comprehensive plan for actors to participate in streaming revenue since the current business model has eroded our residuals income. That's a big thing too. I didn't know this until recently, but actors don't make shit from streaming. That is fucked. Uh, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad, Jesse, hasn't made a cent off streaming of Breaking Bad. What? Like, how does that happen? How do they not make money off that? And the AMT PTP responding to their comment about how actors should make money off streaming? They simply said no. AMPTP, just as a reminder, is the um, alliance of motion picture and television producers. So Amazon, Apple, Disney, NBC, Netflix, Paramount, Sony, Warner. Like, what? How is it this bad? How are they such shitbags? They've been this bad. That's the worst part. We're just like, a lot of people, if like, if they've dug into it, they would have known. But like, me as an average consumer, I didn't know how bad a lot of this stuff was. I assumed actors made money off fucking streaming. How do they not make money off of streaming? It's ridiculous. Um, so the next one, all performers need support from our employers to keep our health and retirement funds sustainable. Contribution caps haven't been raised in 40 years, imperiling our pension and health plans. Pretty fucked up. Would you consider raising the caps to adjust for inflation and ensure that all performers, regardless of age or location, receive equal contribu uh, contributions? Here are some normal increases, nowhere near the level of inflation, that won't adequately fund your health plan. Also, background child performers under 14 years of age living in the West Coast zone don't deserve pension contributions, which is why we haven't paid them since 92. I don't know what the deal with that is. I don't know why they don't deserve it. There's probably regulations there. I don't know. I would like it if they gave actors a bit more towards their pension and health plans. That'd be cool. They should. It's if they haven't upped it in 40 years, like fuck man, things are different. Like life is not the same as it was 40 years ago. Uh, principal performers need to be able to work during hiatus and not be held captive by employers. This is a big one. Like, you see actors who, like, do one thing. Like, Tom Holland does Spider-Man. Doesn't do shit for a while after Spider-Man movie comes out because it takes time to do things. Like, he can jump from, like, from Spider-Man to another project once they're done Spider-Man, but he can't just do Spider-Man, do this. Like, they can't mix. These timelines we've proposed have helped series regulars by limiting the increasingly long breaks between seasons, giving them some, cer some certainty as to when they'll start work again or will be released. These Take these select few improvements that will only help a select few. I don't, it's not giving me like anything here indicating what they're talking about, so I don't know for sure, but not cool. Principal performers need to be reimbursed for relocation expenses when they're ex employed away from home. I didn't know this was a, this wasn't a thing either. If somebody has to move for a movie, that's not covered. Like they have to pay for that themselves. What? That is fucked up. I can't understand the logic there. Drop the ruse that series regulars are becoming residents of a new state or country when they go on location and adequately pay them for all of the relocation costs. Amen. 
Here's some stipends which don't realistically reflect the cost of relocating an out-of-state or out-of-country production. It doesn't list anything. So, this is following the questions and answers, essentially. We marched ahead because they intentionally dragged their feet. After we agreed to their compensated bargaining schedule, the AMPTP subjected us to repeated stonewalling and delays. It took more than four weeks of bargaining for the AMPTP to agree to simple basic issues of fairness and respect, such as access to reproductive health care and gender-affirming care for performers working away from home in states that restrict medical access. I don't understand exactly what that means. Reproductive health care. I don't, I don't know how, like, I don't know how affected people would be from that. I don't know. A consultation process to guard against racist and sexist wiggings and paint downs of stunt performers. Uh, stunt, perf mm, that's a rough one. Because say you hire someone as a stunt performer and they're trying to stunt perform for like a black person, but they're white kind of got to blackface them in certain situations okay here's an idea cg them <laughs> don't do that don't black don't white face people cg them if that's the like a lot of these things are kind of blunt like i can't always understand exactly what they're trying to say but if they're trying to guard against racist and sexist wiggings and paint downs and such that just leads me to believe that stunt performers are getting like painted up in like blackface not cool CG them. Simple as fucking that. Uh, safety for performers working with animals on set. I would imagine... I think that one's a bit of a stretch. I don't see how that wouldn't be a thing. Like, for animals to be on a set, there has to be professionals there that work with them. So, I don't know if their safety would be impacted, but I, I don't know. Is this enough? We need transformative contracts yet remain far apart on the most critical issues that affect the very survival of our profession. Specifically, we need fair compensation that amounts for inflation, revenue sharing on top of residuals, protection from AI technology, and updates to our pension and health contribution caps which haven't been changed in decades. This is why we are on strike. The AMPTP thinks we, are, we will relent, but the will of our membership has never been stronger. We have the resolve and unity needed to defend our rights. So that's basically it. Uh, it lists here more proposals and counters as of July 2023. It seems about the same as what I mentioned before. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Some of it's different, but like I'm not going to get into all of it. It's like the more specifics than what I was already mentioning. There's a lot of it too. I'll link this in the, descri in the description so that you guys can go check it out. But yeah. This SAG after strike is serious, and honestly, it's terrible to see this happen. Like, this has happened before. Like, I'm pretty sure there was a strike in, I want to say, 2008. I mean, we usually bounce back from it. Like, normally, things go back to normal after a while, after the, you know, the big boys say, okay, fine, or, hey, we'll do this instead. It's shitty and insane the way production companies treat actors and workers like you have so much money but you can treat the people that work for you to bring in your money terribly i guess that's just kind of how life is there's a food chain there's the top of the food chain and then there's the people below them the people at the top of the food chain don't care about the people below them with production companies same fucking thing here's a fucking camera work monkey dance monkey like that's not cool it shouldn't be like that. It should have never been like that. And it should change. Like, a lot of the demands requested here are completely reasonable. Like, I don't understand how the movie industry is so bad. I want to talk about CGI more, but I think I'll get to that a different day. Because I fucking hate CGI. Um, but what does this mean moving forward? Like I mentioned, I think things will go back to normal. I don't think there's going to be too much repercussion. I mean, I really hope there is an agreement made about the whole AI situation and CG. I want CG to be tamed down a lot in general, not just involving, like, using likenesses without consent. That's very not cool. But I think CGI as a total, like, the amount that gets used is also not cool. Um, will things change? I hope so. I honestly do things should be better like i couldn't like i can't comprehend how bad things are like it's so bizarre that 
this media, like movies, Netflix, like Amazon, like all the big production companies of these things just get away with this stuff and it flies right under the rug. That's why bringing attention to SAG-AFTRA and this whole strike is really good to do. Because it's a lot of stuff that I didn't even know. Like, I didn't do much preparation going into this episode on the strike. I just knew I wanted to talk about it because it's important. And there's a lot of actors going on this strike and it's perfectly reasonable. So, for the sake of the movie industry, things should change.